Hello everybody, Zoltan Famous here, and welcome to this brand new review of the brand new Flower Kings album by Royal Decree. I got this um, on March 2nd. I pre-ordered the album. I listened to the album about, I don't know, 20 times now, front to back, and I think I'm finally ready to give my review on this album. So, let's begin with the album cover. First of all, this uh, album cover was made by uh, Kevin Sloan, I think. I think that's how you say his name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering, butchering your name. <laughs> um, obviously, the artwork is gorgeous. It has the same kind of themes. You can see the, uh, the, the watch, the pocket watch, and these tangerines, which is a very um, common element in Kevin Sloan artwork. It was in uh, the Waiting for Miracles artwork as well. The uh, stopwatch and the uh, the tangerines and, you know. It's a very traditional looking kind of 70s album artwork. The logo, obviously, is awesome. Awesome. Um, and uh, the inside, I do not have the discs. They are in the stereo downstairs. Awesome. Looks great. The booklet is nicely printed and has all the details, you know, nice. The credits are on the back. The lyrics are all nicely uh, printed out. And uh, there's a nice picture. Uh, there's a few picture book uh, images here. There's a few picture pages here. Um, there's a... Uh, Lots of really great stuff in this. I mean, some instrumentals, some shorts, all the lyrics, even the stuff that isn't doesn't have lyrics. It just says instrumental, which is very nice. Which is apparently a common thing. I don't know why I said that, but um, more and more pictures. Really well designed. In the giant Flower Kings logo in the booklet, which is very nice again, and of course the credits and the uh, thanks to all the people who worked on this album or gave inspiration to, from the band members themselves. Again, wonderful album art. The uh, print on there is very nice and clear. Focus. There you go. Nice. Very beautiful artwork. Of course, you also have nice, beautiful text on the side there. It's a nice digipack. I like digipacks more than I do um, jewel cases, so that's a very nice feature to have. But yeah, great artwork, great. Um, so let's actually get to the um, my overall thoughts, and then I'll get to the tracks, and I'll just go from there. <laughs> um, for me, by royal decree is an un it will is to be an underrated masterpiece. It's an it's almost untouchable. It's got so much character and so much of that classic '90s Flower King sound we started to get deprived of with albums like Waiting and Islands, and I mean even a little bit of um. You know, uh, Desolation Rose, it's the classic 90s Flower King sound. And, of course, just the set of the record, there isn't a complaint I can give about the actual tracks, the set, on this album. Sure, there is a few things to sort of complain about, and there have been a few people who do complain, who have complained about this part specifically. The lack of an epic, which is basically the Flower King's bread and butter. As you can see, there is no song actually over the eight minute mark. Blinded gets close, but it does not go over eight minutes. It stays under eight minutes. All of these songs are all under eight minutes. And that can actually be kind of a letdown for some fans, which I, which I understand. It kind of... I was hoping for an epic on this one, for sure. I mean, man, we've been uh, dying for a Flower King's epic for years. Ever since uh, 
Waiting for Miracles came out, we haven't got a real epic. Which is a little bit upsetting, but I can understand why if I if I if I know why Roin Stoll is not choosing not to do epics right now, is I can kinda understand why, but he hasn't exactly said why. But I feel like it's just motivation to try and write one because, God, the epics can be draining. And I get that. I have two albums released, and both of them had epics. And my dad and I were just, we were thinking, God, the epic on Ingenious Cacophonies was kind of draining. And it took us a while to get really back into the spirit of recording the album. But overall, we were proud of the results. And it's it just it takes a while to get back in though, so I get that. Um, but for me, given the length of this album, which is about ninety three minutes, um, I would have expected at least a song over the ten minute mark. But that's just my thought process. I would have expected at least a ten minutes long, but we didn't get one, which is fine because. I actually really, really, really enjoy all the songs on here. I don't think there's any filler content that some people would consider filler content. I don't see any filler on this album. And it's got such a bite. It's got such a, a 90s characteristic, which is something that I appreciate more. Um, it, it, yeah, the lack of a song over the 10-minute mark is made up for the fact that it gets back to that old classic Flower King sound from the 90s. A callback to the old Flower King's days and recognizable Easter eggs. For example, on A Million Stars, at around the 2.30, 2 at around uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds into the song, you get... A bit of the theme from Garden of Dreams, which is really, really cool. And it's a nice callback to Old Flower Kings from the 90s, which is an awesome, awesome little thing. There's a lot of them on this album, which is absolutely awesome. This is... Wow. So, to get to the actual um, tracks, I will go down track by track, and kind of give you my thoughts on it. Um, the dark, the, the Great Pretender. Um, when I first heard it, I thought it was um, a little messy, but it grew on me a lot. It's got so many of those really classic Flower King's tonalities that you get. Tonality, is that, is that the right word? <laughs> I don't think so. But you get those classic Flower Kings tones from this. And you get some inspirations, like from Camel. They did a kind of a reference to Camel on, the, on that song, which is really, really cool. So I'll take that. Great song overall. I give it about a 9 out of 10. Pretty good. Uh, World Gone Crazy. That's one of my favorite songs on this entire album. It's um, very, again, very classic. It's... Got a little bit more of the uh, kind of a Retropolis kind of sound to it, but it also has um, bits of like um, unfold the feet. Well, not unfold, may, more like uh, the Rainmaker and uh, Space Revolver on that kind of thing. It's also got just a really good keyboard solo by Zach. Great stuff. Blinded. Didn't think I'd expect this, but when I um about uh I think two days ago, my father and I were listening to some Steely Dan, and um we were listening to it, and I was we were listening to some uh, Asia Steely Dan, specifically the t the song Peg and um and uh, well Deacon Blues, and those songs are great, but um. When we put this on last night, we were listening to Blinded, and, and I was the one who kind of pointed out to my father that it sounds a lot like Steely Dan, uh, the kind of a weird kind of jazz rock gu guitar chords mixed with that very somber kind of mellow drumming for from Mirko, 
which is awesome. So, Blinded had a lot of a... It had a little bit of a quietness to it. It also had a lot of, um... Steely Dan in there, which was really strange to hear. Really good song, though. A Million Stars. Um, a great little acoustic track with a lot of space on it. It's great. And... It changes keys on that song a lot. Actually, this entire album is complicated with key changes. Um, great um, Easter egg with uh, the uh, Garden of Dreams theme in there. Really great. Uh, the Soldier. Banging tune. Really great. I love that song specifically. The Soldier. Amazing song. Just a... Uh, Starts off with a nice organ, which I'm sure is probably a Nord. <laughs> that or it could actually be a real, uh, a real Hammond there, but because I think I saw Zach in some of the recordings with an actual Hammond. This, uh, the soldier is kind of again, kind of very 90s Flower Kings going back and just recapturing the beauty of like Stardust We Are kind of stuff in there. Same with a million stars, by the way. Uh, the darkness in you, which is kind of like the bridge from uh, Waiting for Miracles, but it's got less of the bluesy side that I don't particularly particularly appreciate, which is great. I do love Roy Stoltz um, bluesy stuff, but there are some times where I'm just like, hmm. I don't appreciate it on this. Thankfully, this almost has none, if at all, which is nice because this kind of, again, one more time, kind of goes back to what Roin was planning on doing with the Flower Kings back in the 90s. Just kind of going straight in, yes, Genesis, but making it his own, which is awesome. This is, this is the entire thing right here. <laughs> Darkness in you, very much like the bridge, but better, in my opinion. I love the bridge, but it's. I think the darkness in you is just a better track, in my honest opinion. Uh, we can make it work. Kind of a Beatlesy track, actually. If we can make it work. A very Beatlesy track. That is so Beatles. Like I'm thinking Sgt. Pepper's type Beatles type track here. Peacock on Parade. Really, really groovy tune. Really cool. Love it. Really good. I can't say more than that. I just love this album. Revolution. This has uh, Jonas Lindbergh on bass on that one, which is awesome. Um, I've listened to a little bit of Jonas Lindbergh on the other side, and it's a pretty th the new one, and it's pretty cool. Really good production. Nice songs in the epic with uh, Roin. Really cool. Really great tune. Overall, disc one. I have to say. For a Flower Kings album, absolutely 10 out of 10. Time the Great Healer. I don't get the name. I don't know where these... I don't know how you guys come up with these names, but they're so creative. Time the Great Healer. What does that mean? Roin, if you're watching this, please elaborate on these titles. Peacock on Parade. God, that's a that's insane. That, that, these uh, This album has a lot of... Uh, interesting names but um time the great healer again kind of like um, a spiritual song progress it's a spiritual successor track on this album to the opening title track the great pretender both songs great kind of hankering down on the same themes which is again kind of calling back kind of going back and just um Reprising a few of the same themes from the first song on the album that you hear. Letter. Um, a complicated uh, short tune. Very strange. But I cannot... I, I personally like it. It's a very strange tune. So many weird drum beats. Mirko just killed it on that track. Um... Oh, something I forgot to mention about this is, uh, this album is actually the first to not include Jonas Reingold on every track. In fact, most of these tracks, I think, are done by Michael Stolt. Welcome back. Um, 
But yeah, I forgot to mention that, I'm sorry, but Evolution, great song, really, really catchy. Again, these guys are kind of going into the more like Revolution, Evolution, Million Stars, got all the same kind of themes there, but Evolution is the uh, instrumental track on this album. Very long instrumental track, which is nice, uh, five minutes. And it's uh, got a lot of uh, Zack and uh, Roy noodling, and it's really cool. Silent Ways. A bit more of an acoustic Yesy track, actually. Silent Ways. Again, stellar track. Moth. Again, a very funky tune. Very cool. Kind of a real big callback to Stardust We Are. Huge, huge, huge callback to the Stardust We Are kind of era. And I love it. It's got a lot of that uh, atmosphere that Stardust had, and it's got the acoustic bits that I really liked from the second disc on Stardust We Are, so very nice callback there. The Big Funk! A pretty uh, complicated track. Gosh. Pretty complicated. It's got a lot of uh, interesting melodies, accompanied by some complicated drumming and uh, good guitar playing, solid bass playing. Open Your Heart kind of goes back to the more uh, subtle sound that the Flower Kings loves go hunk hankering back to. Going way back. All the harmonies on this song. Hase just did a great job on this. I love that song. That, that song's great. Open Your Heart. One of the best songs on this album by far as well. Just such a solid piece. Shrine, uh, Zach did a great job on that. Nice, beautiful piano interlude. I guess it would be considered part of uh, Funeral Pyres, which I I guess makes Funeral Pyres uh, 8 minutes and 22 seconds, but I don't know. It feels more like an interlude than an intro, but it's really, really nice. Zach did a great Emotional little um, keyboard, well, piano interlude, which was very, very well done. Good stuff. And Funeral Pyre stand the album off. Once again, a very emotional ending to a really great album. A f solid track, very fun. And ends with an atmosphere. So it's a really solid Flower Kings album. Um, I am going to say this. I never thought I'd say this. But this might actually take the sum of no evil from my top three this might be uh, so it might actually go to uh by royal decree number three flower power for number two and stardust we are for number one by the way speaking of ranking i'm going to be doing another flower king's best worst to best to start off season two who could have thunk it but i did and i am and this is going to be a really good one i think uh, season two will be a lot better than season one I did a lot of good, um, uh, best, worst to bests on, uh, season one, but season two will be better. I'm gonna do a lot of bands, Spock's Beard, The Flower Kings, again, probably twice, because let's face it, I don't think they're done, and they'll probably have another album out by next year, <laughs> probably. Um, I'm gonna do Hacken. I'm gonna redo Dream Theater, because, uh, the new album just came out, and I have to listen to it. I haven't gotten around to it. Um, I got a lot of other bands um, uh, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing Transatlantic with my best friend. I can't wait to do that one. Um, and we, I got a lot of other worst to bests coming and probably another Slipknot one. So everyone keep that one on the down low. <laughs> but yeah. The Flower Kings by Royal Decree, absolutely one of my absolute favorite Flower Kings albums. Roy Stolt, you nailed it. Mirko, your drumming on this entire album was stellar. The production was great. The engineering, I imagine, just was a hectic job, but really good stuff. Zach, this is your best keyboard performance on from the Flower Kings yet. I am yet to see... You just do, like, a two-minute keyboard solo <laughs> like Thomas did back in the day. Um, but you did, you did a great job on this album. The atmospheres were good. Your keyboard sounds, the, the, the 
sounds you picked for this album. Really good. And of course, the solos you did on this album are pretty damn good too. As for the bass playing, all three bass players did great. Jonas, you did great. Michael, welcome back. You did fantastic. And Jonas Lindbergh on Revolution. Nice, really, really solid bass playing. Really, really nice stuff. I loved it. Um, Hasse Brunison actually also returned on this album, which was awesome to hear those custom percussions again. Just mm, loved that. The fact that Hasse Brunison is back is really nice to hear. The backing vocals were stellar on this album. And the saxophone playing. Man, there were so many good saxophone moments on this album. And I... <clears throat> By Royal Decree, absolutely a top three Flower Kings for me, by far. You guys nailed it out of the park. Absolutely fantastic work. I love this album, and I am so glad I pre-ordered it because, wow, stellar. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. If the Flower Kings members are watching this, thank you for releasing this. <laughs> This is a great album. Alright, peace.